Well, and now they admit the Patriot Act and Homeland Security is for gun owners, conservatives, Ron Paul supporters, and returning veterans. We're well, told it's for these brown people. It's, it's designed specifically not to be used. It's designed to be used as an intimidation and fear tactic, just like the Gestapo during the Second World War. People were afraid to have conversations in coffee shops because if they said anything against the Fjorda, the Gestapo, if they were listening or... One of their Hitler youth was listening in and reported you to Gestapo. They would take you in for questioning. And generally the first time, they wouldn't do anything. But you would crap your pants out of fear. And that's what it's about. It's about. And by the way, by the way, they're, as you know, they're now having Obama's youth brigades that are in military formations and uniforms, red oh, and black, yeah. knock on your door and ask, we're just canvassing. Do you support the, the leader, the president, the Fuhrer? <laughs> Chairman Obama. <laughs> what do the elites think of Obama? Because I confirm from Estill and Ann Tucker, he was at Bilderberg last year. Did you hear anything about uh, him at Bilderberg last year? Well, the reason he was selected over Hillary is simple. P the Hillary such had a huge amount of people that hated her. Negatives, yeah. Okay, and Obama didn't. And they also picked Obama because the bottom line is they were looking for somebody who is a great speaker and who's going to persuade people, you know, he reads that teleprompter so well, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he really does. does. I mean, and this is what people don't get. If you, I, I, listen, I was with a couple senators, and I, I was with them to see what they do all day. It's a professional acting job. Do you spend 90, 70% of their day is for raising money. They don't read any of the bills they sign. They don't write any of the bills they sponsor. Unbelievable. What it's a about, complete acting job in Washington. What about the tipping point? You know, it's not just that the good guys are going to help us win. 1% started the war in 1775, 5% won the war. We don't need a majority. We've got way more than 5%, probably like 20% know what's going on now from my own gauge. I can get your expert take on that and, and really want it. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to know. But there's going to be a lot of people who are members of the elite, different strata of the elite, are going to also see that we're starting to win, and they're going to jump ship over to our side. I'm already seeing more and more of that. So believing we can win and, and, and get going in the direction of liberty again, a tipping point, getting the pendulum swinging, that's really doable if we just believe in it and act like winners. Well, you, you, what you just said there is very, very astute. And this is what most people don't understand. If you look, for example, at all the wars, Switzerland's always, always neutral, and nobody touches them. Why? Because that's where all the cash is. But every war, it doesn't matter who wins. Do you understand? Yes. It's irrelevant. So if, 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 if at our levels, we don't care who wins the war. It's a yawn. It's like, okay, it doesn't matter because it's who profits. We're, we're like Don King. We, we own both fighters. It, it doesn't matter. It's about playing that war, playing all the sides to your best uh, profit. Correct. And it doesn't matter who wins because we own both sides. And that's why they want the Afghan and Iraq war to go on and on because it's nothing but a black hole to pump trillions into. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, those wars are, I mean, keep in mind, America goes into wars around the world primarily to secure money for contractors and pay off friends. I mean, that's why you think France and Germany got so pissed off when America went into Iraq, because they're the ones who had 90 percent of the contracts. Absolutely, but now America, they're not as... And America went in and said, sorry, we're taking over the contracts. And that's why France and Germany got really mad. But suddenly they're on board with Iraq because they were given some of the contracts back. Correct. That's, all, it's all, that's what people don't understand. I've been to some, when, when we went into Iraq, before we went in, people don't know this, but there were like uh, uh, group meetings, how to profit from the upcoming Iraqi war. And these are business symposiums with directors and corporate executives from infrastructure companies and oil companies and so forth all getting together. I was there uh, talking about how we're going to go into this country. I mean, you had John Perkins on the uh, economic hitman. He, you know, he, he's brilliant explaining this. He was right there in the front lines. Of oh, Venezuela listen, listen. And, and, and Ecuador. Kevin Trudeau, I mean, I've seen in the uh, Enron, smartest guys in the room, they have video of those meetings. You know what? I've twisted your arm, but, but you said you'd stay longer. Do one more short segment so we can... Put a nice bow on this. Of course, what, of course. 
one of the most amazing interviews I've ever done. It's with uh, Kevin Trudeau. Uh, just absolutely uh, amazing. We'll give you all the websites and a lot more on the other side. Here's one of them, naturalcures.com. My site's infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. Boy, he is something else. You know why the man is after him. Kevin Trudeau, I, I can find no fault with this guy. I just agree with him on every front. You know, also, the nouveau riche, the new wealth, the middle class, uh, some of the even ultra-rich who are new money, they realize the elites waging war on them. What about how the globalists are now, after 500 years, going after Switzerland, shaking down the smaller accounts but leaving the big juicy ones alone, and then David Rockefeller's bragging about they're going to end all tax havens, set a global tax rate to the OECD, end quote tax havens, open announcements of world government with these bankers running it. I think this tiny elite has really going to get their butt kicked, and I've seen the shift because they're waging war on not just the middle class and the poor, they're going after a lot of big money. Well, there's an interesting concept about this, and let me just put it to you this way. From the, the guys that I hang around with, I mean, you know, maybe they manage a, a $10 billion hedge fund. You know, one guy last year, you know, netted a couple hundred million dollars. And when I chat with these guys about taxes, they laugh because to them it's all smoke and mirrors. Look, we pay a little bit of tax, but it's, it's nothing. It's nothing like people think we're going to pay because they're – I mean, the U.S. tax code, nobody can even understand it. You, well, it's you, written for the elites to pay just a few percent, and the people are paying 40. Correct. I mean, listen, I have corporations in Switzerland, and, you know, they have the best roads in the world. You're in Chicago or in, or in Austin. I was down there. It's like driving on, the, as, as Mankow says, it's like driving on the surface of the moon. There's, <laughs> you know, craters everywhere, right? Well, yeah. I'm driving around Germany, and I cannot find one, not one pothole, not one. Now, guess what? They have to pay for that. They build the roads to last 25 years, not five like they do in the U.S. So you have to pay for that. So when I set up a company in Switzerland, for example, they say, look, the taxes are 10 percent or 12 percent or 15 percent, and you pay it because there's good infrastructure and things. You, you, no problems, like buying a good steak. Yeah, but here it's a scam. Good, but you get good value for your money. In the U.S., when you pay your taxes, it goes – paying interest on the government's debt, and it's going to the bankers. You're not getting any infrastructure. Are Americans, uh, Kevin Trudeau, are Americans known as the schmucks of the world now? The suckers. The word is suckers. The, the Americans are the suckers. There's no question about it. Is it because we were so free and you know had it so good that we kind of sat on our laurels? I think it's because the media in America brainwashes people to have them believe things should be a certain way. The majority of Americans have never left the United States. Let me just give you an example. You're driving the road, down the road in America, right? You stop in a gas station. You go to the bathroom. Is it the cleanest place in the world? No. I mean, it's disgusting, right? You're in Europe. You stop in a, in a gas station. You walk in, you go to the bathroom. It's spotless. There's an attendant there. Okay? You're in America. You stop at a gas station. You want something to eat? Oh, how about this three-week-old sandwich in the back? Right? I mean, do you know what I'm talking about? There's like, yes. no food. In, Amer in Europe, you walk into a gas station, you want something to eat? There's a chef and a kitchen. And all the fruits and vegetables are organic because they don't allow genetically modified The stuff. people demand quality, and here we were sold on crap. Just That's like correct. Just like McDonald's 50 years ago would put a trash can there and say thank you, and we like idiots would go throw our trash away and just lowering the standard. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. So the bottom line is people in America just don't know anymore how things should be. I mean, we just don't get it. I mean, if you look at a cookbook in America and it says this is home cooking, uh, ingredients, one can of mushroom, cream of mushroom soup – that's not how you make something. You don't use a can of cream of mushroom soup in a homemade recipe. You know, you know what? I disagree with you. We're going to have you arrested for saying what a home-cooked meal is. You don't have free speech. You don't have free speech, Kevin Trudeau. Kevin, in closing, I know I gave the number out. We have loaded phones. I forgot to go to your calls, and I'm going to let Kevin go here in a moment. But, but Kevin, when you get back to the U.S. or in the next couple of weeks or in the next month, can we have you back up and take calls? Yeah, absolutely. What I'll do is uh, when, when I get back, I'll call you. I'll fly down to Austin for a couple of days. I'll come on the show. We'll, we'll, you and I will have a chance to have a good meal and a beer and have some, have some fun as well. 
man, I can't wait to meet you in person, and I'm really glad that we got in touch through uh, through uh, ManCal, and it's just been wonderful having you here. Folks can also go to your uh, uh, kind of master uh, portal website, kevintrudeau.com, and that goes to the entire family of sites. And you're not just the king of infomercial. You started the Golf Channel and a bunch of other channels. Uh, Kevin Trudeau, an amazing uh, individual. Trudeau is spelled T-R-U-D-E-A-U. So KevinTrudeau.com or NaturalCures.com. And what's the big mega information site name again? That's the Global Information Network. GlobalInformationNetwork.com. Well, just an incredible uh, hour and a 20-minute conversation with Kevin Trudeau. And we hope uh, that, well, you know what? They've told him he has no free speech, but he's saying, you know what? I'm innately free. He's speaking out. He's ignoring what they've said. And we salute you, Kevin Trudeau. We'll talk to you very soon. Sounds great. Have a great day, Alex. All right, let me say bye to you during this break, and I'll let you get back to what you're doing there.